So you're given a question. You have to determine the rate law for this reaction written down below here. So it's, again, carbon dioxide decomposing into carbon monoxide and oxygen. Okay, so, oh, I know how to write the rate law. You write rate equals K times the concentration of the CO2, and all we have to do is find that power or order, right? The power to which the carbon dioxide is taken. Yeah, all right, so let's look at the data and see if we can figure it out. Well, wait a minute, hang on a second. This data isn't the same as before. It doesn't have an initial rate and concentrations. It's got time given for a reaction and the various concentrations that CO2 has. This is graphed for CO2 here, or charted for CO2. The concentration CO2 has as it decreases over a given amount of time. Oh man, now actually that is data that that looks a little bit more doable in our labs. It's very difficult to get initial rates, but it's easy to time a reaction and measure the concentrations. At least it is for most scientists. Well, how are you going to approach this type of question then? How do you do it? Because it doesn't fall within the same guidelines as the initial rate method. This requires integrated calculus, so it's called the integrated rate law method. Now I'm going to show you how to determine the order for that carbon dioxide in this reaction with this data. Here's the first step coming up. The first step is to take the concentration of the CO2, which was given in the chart that I gave you before, that's, that's versus time, and find for these concentrations two other types of data. Here's what you got to look for. You have to take the concentration of your reactant and then take the natural log of that concentration. The natural log is a button, LN, on your calculator. And what you do is you just type in LN and then 0.1 to get negative 2.30. A natural log is just, well, you know how the number 100 is 10 squared. And so if you take the log of 10 squared, you actually get the number 2. Logs are done to the base 10. But natural logs are done to the base 2.1783. So I know that that sounds kind of 2.7183. I know that sounds kind of crazy. But the thing is, if you take this number, 0.1, and then you want to find the exponent for when you express this number in the base, 2.7183, you're going to get yourself negative 2.30. Okay. So you find the natural log of this number, but you also take this concentration and go one over that concentration and record that data. So now you've got in your chart a concentration and time as well and you've got a natural log of the concentration one over the concentration and this is what you're going to do with this data. If you take the time and put it on the x-axis of a graph and you plot the concentration of the CO2 versus time, the natural log of the concentration of the CO2 versus time, or one over the concentration of the CO2 versus time, you get three different graphs. The one that gives you a straight line obeys the straight line equation y equals mx plus b. If you take our data that we collected and you turn that all that data into the form y equals mx plus b, you get three equations here. Y equals mx plus b. Now, if you take the natural log of the concentration of the CO2 and you graph it versus time and you get a straight line, that means then that the data we collected obeys this equation. And that will tell you you've got first order in terms of the power to which that reactant CO2 is taken in the rate law. So you've determined what that, re that order is. If you don't get a straight line for this one, but get a straight line for this one, then that means then that when you graph one over the concentration of the CO2 versus time, and a straight line is given, you have a second order. But if you just graph the concentration versus time and get a straight line, you've got yourself zero order. So, we take all that data from the chart and we plug it in to our calculators. Now, real quick, if you have a, a Texas Instrument type of calculator, the first thing you do is you go to your stat function and then go to edit 
and plug in your data under L1, that's your x-axis, and L2, that's your y-axis. So you plug in the time coordinates under x and you plug in the natural log coordinates under the y. And then you, all you have to do is make sure in your window you've got the scalar proper, properly done in terms of what your numbers are. And then you can just press graph and tunk, oh, make sure that the second function stat plot that you've got your stat plot actually pressed to on and, and, and selected to line. And then you press graph and bingo, it'll graph it for you. And if it's a straight line, then you got yourself first order. If it's not, then plug in the one over the concentration of CO2. See if you got yourself a straight line. If that's not, you probably got zero order. Those are generally first, second, and zero, the ones that we give you at university level chemistry.